Oh, you did it again. It's so loud. It's so loud. I just, I just don't like young people to be scared. So we don't have many. Uh, so, so, Charlie, got you and Alex, uh, the first time I saw you and Alex play live was at the Taylor Hawkins concert. That was an amazing show. That was a magical, magical day. And it meant so much to see you play in person. It brought me to tears. I was crying too, like a baby. Um, I got to the band late, and never thought I'd get the chance to watch you, you and Alex play after the sadness of Neil. Blah, blah, blah. So he says, some of his favourite performances are the ones where you've played with other artists. Rock on the Hall of Fame, Taylor Hawkins, yes. Are there any other artists who you haven't performed with yet that you'd like to, and why? Oh gosh, you know, uh, I think about that kind of thing, because one of my secret dreams is to just get hired as a bass player for a band. Not have to do 14 Something you can pick up. <laughs> not dance on my foot pedals, not play keyboards, uh, not worry about singing, not ever have to worry about getting a cold and having to go out there. If you're just a bass player, man, you're, you're in a safe zone. You can just yes. play. So, uh, yeah, there's so many musicians I love. <laughs> you talk about that uh, concert. Taylor in London at Wembley. It was one of the greatest, it was a sad day, but it was one of the greatest experiences I've had at, in a live concert environment because every musician was there for the same yeah, reason. It's Everybody was in the same respectful mode. No egos, no competitive spirit. Everybody communed together drank too much together, which was nice. <laughs> um, and the drinks were free. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's free. They make always the best drinks. Yeah. Yeah. That after show, what an after show. Uh, so, there were so many players there I respected. Like, I loved the Queens of the Stone Age. I'd love to play with Josh Homme someday. Uh, he's just an awesome musician. Uh, you know, I can't, I mean, all the guys in the foods are great. Um, oh. You know, there just were so many great players that day, uh, and uh, eventually, at the second tribute, I got to play with Danny Carey, too, who I, I love, and that was a real, real thrill to play with him. So, yeah, there are many musicians I'd like to play with. Uh, I'm not a young chap anymore, I don't know if that will ever happen, but... You never know. There were a lot of sort of super groups that day just for one or two songs. Did anybody ask you to step in and do that on the day? Because there were a few kind of mini secrets where like Brian Johnson played with Lars and Rick and that kind of thing. Yeah, well, Dave played with just about everything. Dave was on stage yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. He was sleeping three he hours was. a night. He was sleeping three hours a night. And, like, he's Super Dave. I call him Super Dave. And it's like, he's, he's not, he's in sex, not normal. And he loves it. But he just lost his BFF. Hmm. His BFF Taylor loved to be a fanboy of all these artists, mm -hmm. and so he was doing him proud, and he certainly did. Just talking about Taylor as a fanboy, we were backstage, I told the other night, but I love the story. We were backstage at the Rogers Stadium for the Foo Fighters gave me you and Alex, and Taylor just had he made his own Starman t shirt, and it was beautiful, but it was only he saw the Starman on the back of his t shirt. <laughs> and Alex looked away, and he went to Gallo, and made the t shirt, and I went, that's a bootleg. And he just, as I was like, yeah, yeah, bastard. He was like, oh. But he still wore it on stage. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, is Lee Boole here, please? Hey, Lee, Lee's from Wales. Well, not Lee. Are you Welsh? Well, yes, you know, know him? You must know him. Everyone knows me better. Everyone knows him. Thank you. It says, all the dark getting, all the dark is good morning. So, Lee Lee does not watch or clock. Look at you leaving it out. Borda Getty. Borda Da Getty. Borda Da Getty. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> and and not star is good night. We do that at the end. Not star. In you know, Yiddish, I just say, Gai Schluffen. It means go to sleep. We do a lot. We do a lot. <laughs> so Lee says, I've been a fan since 1982, and he's here tonight with his 30 year old son, which is lovely. Hello, 30 year old son. Uh, in fact, his son ended up studying music in university because of your music and your influence. He's now using his degree to go into teaching. What a lovely story. What a lovely positive affirmation that is. Given that, to the question, given that your mother didn't exactly approve of you becoming a musician, nor would she like to be an entertainer, would, uh, have you ever encouraged your kids or discouraged your kids to go into the business? Well, I had a rule in my household that until you're 16, you have to learn how to play an instrument. It didn't matter what instrument, but I have always thought 
if you can get some kind of training musically, then you'll always have that. Uh, whether you want to be a musician, I didn't care, but I think it's a wonderful thing to know how to play some music. Mm -hmm. It's a great expression, whether professional or amateur, whatever. My son was not very inclined to do that. And he started playing piano, did he? And he, he took it up for a few years, but then when he was about 13, oh my God, every night it was just drag him out, fight to get him to practice. Mm -hmm. And he was more into sports and reading fantasy books. So I just, I finally I gave up. I didn't want to make his life a, a hell <laughs> on earth. And, but my daughter kept it up. And she played piano beautifully, and then she started playing guitar, and she, she, was, she had the aptitude. She could have gone forward in that direction, but she opted to go into acting, and she studied acting for many years. So thank you for your question. That's my family musical history. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they need a bass player. Just said. <laughs> Yeah, my, my I can't afford to use it.